It's time for Grand Sumo Highlights. Konnichiwa and thanks for joining us. It's day 10 of the July tournament from the Aichi Prefectural Gymnasium in Nagoya. The Makanochi action on day 10. We'll begin momentarily with Asano Yama is one of the leaders of the pack. Asano Yama in second place, breathing down the tournament leader Mita Keumi's neck with just one loss. And Mita Keumi right there is the sole leader after nine days, nine and oh. Asano Yama in second place, Takayasu Endo and Tochi Ozan, two losses each, trailing Mita Keumi and Asano Yama. Six days to go, and the battle for the Empress Cup is shaping up to be one of the most unpredictable championship race ever, so stay tuned. All right, let's go today with Ishiura and Tochi Ozan first. Ishiura four and five, Tochi Ozan seven and two. Tochi Ozan has kept himself in the striking distance for the Empress Cup. It is good to see Ishiura in much better shape this time. Tochozan blocks Ishiura from coming inside. Tochozan takes Ishiura back and brings him down to the clay. Tochozan gets his kachikoshi. That's his win number eight. That's more wins than losses secured for the veteran Tochi Ozan. And remains at two losses. Ishiura comes in to his left side, but he is completely blocked by Tochi Ozan. Tochi Ozan wins by Kataskashi. It's Asano Yama versus Hokuto Fuji. They are meeting for the first time. Hokuto Fuji is competing at much higher level than he has in the recent past. Asano Yama says, you don't get too many chances to win a championship, so he will try his best to get it this time. Hokuto Fuji attacks and shifts away. Asarema gains a left hand grip, but Hokuto Fuji breaks it. Hokuto Fuji keeps up the attack. Asano Yama is having a hard time stopping Hokuto Fuji. Hokuto Fuji gets the grip and defeats Asano Yama. What a drive he put on Asano Yama after getting that right hand grip. Hokuto Fuji wins. He goes to seven and three. Asano Yama bites the dust for the second time. That's his second loss of the tournament. Another impressive performance by Hokuto Fuji. Asano Yama takes one step behind in the championship race. Look at how the two go after each other. Asano Yama trying to locate Hokuto Fuji trying to get a belt grip. He gets it, but it is broken up by Hokuto Fuji. Hokuto Fuji from one technique to another. Look at the technique sequence. He doesn't stop. He doesn't waste any time once he gets that right hand grip. It's Ryuden facing off Chiyomaru. Ryuden five and four. Chiyomaru four wins and five losses. Ryuden is looking much better this time than he did in May. Chomaru scored his 100th top division victory yesterday. Chomaru takes Ryuden back. He tries to pull him down, but Ryuden stays alive. Ryuden now seizes a grip on Chomaru. Ryuden now has a double inside grip and marches, and Ryuden forces Chomaru out. So Ryuden stayed with Chomaru's pushing and thrusting attack. He was able to persevere Chomaru's fierce onslaught, and it was Ryuden winning in the end. Ryuden wins for the third straight day. He's now six and four. Chomaru had a pretty good touchy eye pushing Ryuden back, but Ryuden watching his opponent very nicely. Chomaru unable to finish him off, so he goes for the pull down. It doesn't work. Ryuden staying with Chomaru's maneuvers, and Ryuden hoping to get an inside grip from a lower angle. And he gets it right about here, left and in first. 
And then he goes for the makikai or the changing of the grip from right hand outside to the right hand inside. He gets it right there. And then he marches and Chiomaru has no answer. It's all due then from here. All right. Moving to the next match. It is Kyoku Taisei 2 and 7 versus Onosho 5 and 4. Kyoko Taisei is in danger of getting a losing record. He cannot afford to lose anymore. Onosho got out pummeled yesterday, somehow. We don't see that very often, but he was apparent in his match yesterday. Onosho is trying to go inside, but Kyoko Taisei eludes the charge. Kyoko Taisei stays with Onosho's moves and shoves him back and out. Pretty good performance by Kyoku Taisei today. Onosho's offense was completely shut down by Kyoku Taisei. Onosho now 5-5. Five five. Kyoku Taisei 3-7. Onosho hoping to get an inside position, but he cannot. Kyoku Taisei moving much faster and better than Onosho today. All right, it's Yutakayama taking on Takara Fuji. Yutakayama six and three, Takara Fuji four and five. The way Yutakayama fought against Endo yesterday was fantastic. It was one of his best sumo ever. Takara Fuji must get his go-to weapon, the right hand outside grip, to handle big bad Yutakayama today. Takara Fuji gets the shallow grip, but Yutakayama breaks it. Yutakayama thrusts and keeps Takara Fuji off his belt. Yutakayama goes inside deep with his right hand and drives Takara Fuji back and out. Yutakayama shows another powerful sumo. So he advances to seven and three. Yutakayama seems to be improving day by day. Today, he blocked Takara Fuji from getting his favorite belt grip. He did not want to go chest to chest, and that's one thing Yutakayama avoided. And that's why he succeeded in the end. Yutakayama thrusting him away. Now Yutakayama goes inside with the right armpit hold, and he takes Takara Fuji back and out. It's Chio Taidu about to fight Nishikigi. Chio Taidu, nice record of six and three. Back-to-back -back losses has taken Chio Taidu out of the championship race. There's no question a 10-match winning performance in May by Nishikigi has raised his confidence. Chio Taidu hits, pulls, and sends Nishikigi out from the rear. One, two, three combination by Chio Taidu today and Nishikigi no reply at all. Nishikigi now five and five. Chio Taidu seven wins and three losses after ten days. Good body charge by Chio Taidu setting up for that uh, pull down and he follows up nicely. Mio Giryu versus Daisho Maru. Miyogiryu comes in with a nice record of 6-3. and three. Daisho Maru wants to rebound today after getting smoked by the tournament leader Mita Keumi yesterday. Daisho Maru moves Miyogiryu back. Daisho Maru comes forward, but Miyogiryu steps to the side and slaps him down. Miyogiryu is the winner. Daisho Maru now 3 and 7. So Miyogiryu just needs one more win to get his Kachikoshi. Power wise, Daisho Maru out muscled Miyogiryu in this one, but Miyogiryu out maneuvered him. Good speed, good sideway maneuver. Right there. 
It's Taka Keisho facing off Abi. They are meeting for the first time. Now Taka Keisho is on a roll with four straight wins. Abi is hoping to get his rhythm back. He comes in with four consecutive losses. Abi with a usual thrusting attack. Takakesho takes Felix, but Takakesho slips to the side and sends Abi down. A Makekoshi losing record for Abi, two and eight. And that's five straight wins for Takakesho to go up to seven and three. Once Takakesho gets a consecutive wins going, it is hard to stop him. Watch Takakesho looking at his opponent nicely. Once again, Abi with his thrusting attack. Takakesho takes few licks. Takakesho backs up, but he slips to the side. With a good timing, thrust down. It is Chiyono Kuni 5 and 4 against Endo with only two losses after nine days, seven and two at the moment. Endo has to avoid losing any more if he wants to haul in his first Empress Cup on Sunday. Chiyonokuni says he wants to fight aggressively to outmaneuver his opponent in every single match. Endo tries to catch Chiyonokuni, but Chiyonokuni stays away from Endo. Chiyonokuni now knocking Endo back. Endo goes 180, and Chiyonokuni goes after him and beats him. Chiyonokuni wins. And Endo suffers his third defeat taking him further back in the championship race. Shono Kuni goes to six and four. Dejected Endo goes back to the dressing room. Endo wanted to catch Shono Kuni, but Shono Kuni is fast and agile. Shono Kuni pounds away. Endo tries to escape, but he has no room to go. Once again, from another angle, Endo wanted to get a belt grip on Chiyono Kuni, but Chiyono Kuni outmaneuvers him. Chiyono Kuni, yes, gets the separation, and that was his game plan, and he gets his thrusting attack going. Endo goes back. He has no room to go, so he goes 180, but Chiyono Kuni all over his opponent today. All right, next up, it is Ikioi and Shodai. Ikioya has the ability to outmuscle his opponent if he can start with his good attacking offense. Shodai is the highest ranking Hiramaku ranking fighter. He wants to move up to at least to the fourth highest Komusubi the next time in September. Shodai is trying to get a double inside position. He gets it, but Ikioya slams Shodai to the dirt. A nice counter move by Ikioya. And it's a make koshi for Shodai, so Shodai 1 will now return to Sanyaku in September. Third straight victory for Ikioi, and he goes to 5-5. Five and five. Everything happened so quickly in this match. Shodai gets a shallow grip, double inside he likes, but Ikioi counters with a Watenage overarm throw. Good reaction by Ikioi. All right, let's move to the next match. It is Koto Shogiku versus Tamawashi. Tamawashi won the last five meetings between them. Tamawashi lost for the first time in five days yesterday. The Mongolian is hoping to start another winning run. He is 34, but Koto Shogiku is still capable of taking down the top dogs. Koto Shogiku stops and he goes! Tamawashi swings him around and out, and Koto Shogiku ends up in the front row, and Koto Shogiku seems to be favoring his left elbow. It was an arm lock throw by Tamawashi, and Tamawashi might have hurt Koto Shogiku's left elbow. Maybe Koto Shogiku hyperextended 
And that elbow, he's in obvious pain. Koto Shogiku loses three and seven. Tamawashi goes to six and four. A devastating Kotenage arm lock throw by the Mongolian. Watch the move. Koto uh, Shogiku gets the left hand inside grip, and that's the grip he likes. So he goes for the uh, forward charge. But look at the swing around maneuver by Tamawashi. Very strong Kotenage arm lock throw. Coming away with his right hand, Tamawashi. Okay, it is Yoshikaze seeking his first victory in Nagoya. Will he get it today? He's up against Ichinojo, the big Mongolian. He is giving his best every single day, Yoshikaze. <laughs> Yoshikaze gains an inside position and goes forward. Yoshikaze now has a double inside grip on the Mongolian behemoth. Yoshikaze launches. Ichinojo is barely staying in the ring. Ichinojo throws Yoshikaze down with an arm lock throw. Yoshikaze still cannot find the daylight. 0 and 10 for Yoshikaze here in Nagoya. Still gets a round of applause for his great effort. Ichinojo, in the meantime, goes to four and six. This one was all Yoshikaze till the very end. Yoshikaze attacking from a lower angle, gets the double inside grip right about here. And he was in business. And he takes Ichinojo back. Ichinojo almost gave in, but Ichinojo kind of stops. And Yoshikaze thought Ichinojo was out of the ring, but he was not. So Ichinojo comes out with that. Kotenage arm lock throw. Hmm. A little bit of mental lapse by Yoshikaze pays the price. It is Mita Keumi and Kagayaki, the tournament leader. Mita Keumi 9 and 0. Kagayaki 3 and 6. Mita Keumi has entered an un uncharted territory. Will he keep his poise and be the last man standing on Sunday? He has six more re bouts remaining. Kagayaki's victory over Goedo slipped out of his hands at the last minute yesterday. <laughs> An intense tachiai by the two. Mitakemi gets an inside grip and attacks, and Mitakemi wins. And for the first time in his career, Mitakemi scores a double digit winning record. Fighting at Sanyaku, that's either at the third highest Sekiwake or the fourth highest Komusubi rank. Ten straight wins for Mitake Umi. He just does not get any better than this for Mitake Umi. Mitake Umi stops Kagayaki's charge and then slips both arms inside and he attacks right away, does not waste any time. Imita Kemi, his confidence is gaining day by day. A double inside hold right about here. And once he gets it, he knows what to do with it. He does not stop. And that's why Kayaki having all sorts of difficulty against Mita Keumi. It is Shohozan versus Goedo. Goedo the Ozeki, six and three. It took Shohozan four and a half years to regain a Sanyaku rank, but it could be a very short stay. Goedo needs two more wins to take care of the Kadoban situation and secure his Ozeki status in the upcoming contests. <laughs> Shohozan coming out with all guns blazing. Goedo shifts away and takes Shohozan to the deck. Shohozan suffers a Makekoshi 2 and 8 now. Losing record for Shohozan. Goedo up to 7 and 3, so he needs one more win to secure that much coveted Kachikoshi. Shohozan comes in, pummeling Goedo. Goedo slips away and sends Shohozan to the clay. So Shohozan was thrusting numerous times, but it did not have any kind of power 
to move Goedo back. Goedo takes the match. And here is the final bout of the day. Musubi no Ichiban, Takayasu 7 and 2 against Kaisei. Takayasu is still in contention with just two losses. He's gunning for his first title. The man from Brazil needs two more wins to get his kachikoshi. Nip and tuck so far. Now the two lock up in Hidari Yotsu left and inside position. This is a grip Takayasu likes, so he could favor the Ozeki. <laughs> Takayasu makes his move, but Kaise hurls Takayasu to the dirt. Takayasu looks to be shaken up. Kaise trying to help Takayasu get back into the ring. Takayasu says, I'm fine. Hope he's okay. Takayasu suffers his third defeat. And that could be a devastating loss for Takayasu in terms of winning his first title. Kaise wins for the first time in the Musubino Ichiban, the final match of the day's action. Watch how this one goes. Kaise uses that right arm lock in the end to fling Takayasu around and out. Good reaction by Kaise. Right here. Kotenage. So you went Hidari Yotsu left and inside position with him. I thought I was in trouble. I somehow managed to come out with a positive result in my opponent's favorite style. Do you know who you are fighting tomorrow? Mita Keumi. He's undefeated. I'll try my best. Try not to get injured too. And that'll do it for day 10 of the July tournament. The standings remain pretty much the same with Mita Keumi on top. And here is the special announcement. NHK World Japan brings you Grand Sumo action live on day 14 and 15. So make sure to join us. Arigato for watching and sayonara.